ductility ductility of an element shows its capacity to deform in the inelastic range without collapse for example uh, in the concrete members reinforcement is present and in the reinforcement there is yield uh, a, there are two uh, main portions yield uh, yield region or elastic region and inelastic region okay so after yielding there is so much release of energy uh, that is called inelastic range and after the in the inelastic range it doesn't mean it is going to fail okay uh, it uh, it have uh, the reserve capacity before the final failure that is in the inelastic range ductility of an element shows its capacity to deform in the inelastic range without collapse okay uh, what will happen uh, this inelastic range will give us uh, time or warning before failure so that is called ductility due to these inelastic deformations the energy is dissipated uh, making the structure relatively stable against the earthquake forces okay so ductility what will do uh, the energy dissipation will occur and making the sta uh, stability of the structure if these deformations successfully occur in the two opposite directions causing reversal of stresses in the mem members hysteresis loops are produced dissipating energy in each cycle of loading unloading and loading in the opposite direction for example here assume uh, let me take the pen okay here is column okay when first it will deform in this direction then after coming back in this direction then so much energy will be used in this phenomena okay uh, first column will go in this direction then come back into this direction this uh, uh, in that process lot of energy will be utilized okay so this hysteresis loop is the uh, measure of the energy okay measure of energy loss is called hysteresis loop so there will be lot of energy loss uh, due to this moment okay due, due to this reversal of stresses response modification factor the response modification factor of structure is the ratio of the seismic base shear of an elastic system to reduce base shear depending upon ductility uh, response modification factor is a very important factor uh, for example if you have a base shear 800 kilonewton okay base shear means seismic force horizontal force acting to the structure uh, if you have a uh, base shear value of 800 kilonewton so seismic base shear is uh, is a factor which will reduce the base shear okay or depending upon what depending upon ductility energy absorbing capacity of your structure uh, increase in natural time period due to yielding and increase in damping ratio of the structure so depending upon these factors the response modification factor works okay the actual base shear is a 800 but due to response modification that base shear can be reduced to 200 kilonewton so that is a very important response modification factor if shear wall uh, these are these, these are the nomenclature if shear wall or brace frame okay provide support to gravity loads and all the later loads the structural system is a bearing wall system in other words gravity loads are stressing on walls that is bearing wall system if separate system are provided to resist lateral and gravity okay gravity loads the structural system is called building frame system okay they means uh, frame members act separately so that is called building frame system special moment resisting frame are frames specially detailed to provide high ductility and spore for lateral and gravity loads by fluxual action fluxual action means uh, moment shear action okay what is special moment resisting frame uh, for example when we design simple beam simple column okay the rest of the procedure in all the designing of members is same the difference between the ordinary design and special moment resisting frame design is that of detailing. We detail the members, details mean the sketch of uh, reinforcement of uh, number of bars, spacing of uh, stirrups. So that is called detailing. Okay, so we detail in such a way that there will be a lot of ductility 
large of energy large lo lot of energy dissipation so we detail in such a way then that type of member is called special moment resisting frame moment resisting resisting frame with masonry shear walls are called mrwf system that is the abbreviation dual system are those in which more than one system are used together maybe special moment resisting frame with uh, with bearing wall system okay a dual system can also be used here is a response modification factor okay bws bearing wall system with concrete or masonry shear walls response modification factor is r 4.5 and the height limit is 49 meter similarly here steel or concrete special movement resisting frame 8.5 okay height limit is none similarly uh, masonry okay concrete shear wall with special movement resisting frame 8.5 five uh, height none okay let me show okay okay here uh, uh, in the slides, I have shown a little, uh, short table. Okay, in the core JBC 97, you can see the whole or large table depending upon the structure type. Okay, structure system. It is response modification factor, our strength factor. I will also discuss how to use. You can see details by yourself. But right now, I am discussing response modification factor. For example, in the table. Uh, slide table ordinary brace frame is not discussed ordinary concrete okay also not discussed okay here is the moment resisting frame if special moment resisting frame concrete 8.5 okay concrete with a special shear walls concrete with special moment resisting frame 8.5 okay so this is a large table okay you can uh, come here and depending upon your structure type you can select the response modification factor values Next is the uh, the value of the response modification uh, factor is determined from the consideration of structures over strength capacity beyond the point at which the elastic response of the structure exceeded means the all the uh, or the major part of the response modification factor is depend upon the strength or over strength limit beyond the elastic range means in the inelastic range that is uh, more dependent upon the response modification factor the value of r always exceeds unity which indicates that all structures are designed for forces less than would be produced in a completely elastic structure what it means uh, i already uh, given an example if if there is a 800 kN base shear then the response modification can uh, factor can be can reduce okay for example uh, if it reduced to 200 it means 800 divided by 2 uh, then it is reducing to uh, uh, 800 divided by 4 that's why it is reducing to 200 kilonewton so the response modification factor value is greater than 1 so uh, what it means uh, here uh, after dividing then we are going to design the member uh, against less base shear okay why less because by dividing r the value will be less this reduced force level is made possible by the energy dissipation and dissipation capacity of the structure at displacements in excess of initial yield after yielding there is lot of deformations okay so this deformation will uh, uh, will cover energy absorption energy dissipation okay so this all uh, will cover the response modification factor okay so response modification factor will uh, uh, we, uh, will cover all these things energy dissipation energy absorption okay after the yield seismic importance factor the factor is equal to 1.25 for essential and hazardous facilities and one for special occupancy standard occupancy and miscellaneous structures what it means for example if you are designing a hospital building then you definitely go for a high importance factor 1.25 for nuclear reactor for important buildings you can use an importance factor 1.25 uh, uh, by using 1.25 it means you are designing the members against 25 percent more forces for using a higher sector factor of safety again that is a very small range okay for detail again you can go in the table 
ओके हेयर ऑक्यूपेंसी कैटेगरी कैटेगरी यू हैव टू सेलेक्ट योर ऑक्यूपेंसी लाइक व्हाट टाइप ऑफ योर बिल्डिंग इज फॉर एग्जांपल बिल्डिंग हाउस ग्रुप ओके all structures with occupancy greater than 5000 persons one okay is essential facilities fire and police stations garages and shelters for emergency vehicles okay aviation control towers okay so all important type of structures you can use in seismic importance factor 1.25 its maximum value is 1.25 minimum value is 1 seismic response coefficient the seismic response coefficient is the fraction of the total dead load of the structure that is acting as a base shear on the structure let me explain uh, you, uh, you, you are designing a building then definitely that building have some weight okay so what is seismic response coefficient seismic response coefficient that it will take the total of this total load of of the structure and multiply with for example 20% 10% and take that load uh, take that value and apply as a horizontal load that is called base shear okay so let me read that definition this is the spawn coefficient is the fraction of that total dead load of the structure that is acting as a base shear on the load okay we take, uh, we calculate the total weight of the building okay uh, when we go definitely for the uh, example then we will also see in the detail the seismic response coefficient so seismic response coefficient is the fraction of the total weight of the building which is acting as a which is acting as a base shear on the structure okay this means that the cs will be boy cs is the uh, base shear will be cs into w we uh, multiply the total weight of the building with the uh, seismic response coefficient that will become the base shear this base uh, seismic response coefficient depends upon uh, this factor depends upon velocity acceleration based on ground response coefficient cv or ca importance factor response modification factor and time period okay so this uh, seismic response coefficient depends on all these things here is the value of seismic response coefficient cs is equal to cv i over rt cv is velocity based coefficient i importance factor r response modification factor t is the time period of the building which is you are going to design if time period is greater than t s subjected to maximum and minimum values okay if your time period value is greater than t s then you have to must check for maximum and minimum values how to calculate t s t s again c s over c v over 2.5 c a these values c v and c a you can pick uh, pick from the previous slides or from the book that uh, depending upon the seismic zone and soil type you can select c v and c a okay again t a will be after calculating the uh, t s 0.2 of t s okay where t a will be used here okay now the maximum minimum values maximum value 2.5 ca i over r okay uh, controls when t value your time period is in between t a to t s minimum value is 0.11 ca i or 0.8 z n v i over r for zone 4 so uh, here is the seismic response coefficient value you have to check against the maximum and minimum values okay seismic dead load okay what uh, loads will be considered in the seismic dead load in software language when the design of uh, building in the software this seismic dead load is named with mass source okay there is another name that is mass source but the purpose is the same so now i am discussing the seismic dead load the seismic dead load consists of the following okay dead load of the structure means beams columns slabs all type of dead load of the structure that will include in the seismic dead load second 25% of the floor live load for storage and warehouses where you are going to store your uh, uh, bags of uh, uh, you know, food wheat okay rice etc uh, and warehouses you have to consider 25% of the live load and third a minimum 
allowance of 50 kg per meter square for movable partitions okay uh, you have may have seen that in the in the office buildings there are partition walls lot of partition walls for the a minimum allowance of 50 kg per meter square for movable partitions will be considered the fourth one the total weight of the permanent equipment and fittings for example on any floor you are uh, going to install a machinery then that machinery will also the load will also come in the seismic dead load okay in the seismic dead load these four things will come okay now here is a uh, magnitude of base shear uh, ubc refined formula base shear uh, can be calculated as cs into w that is already discussed maximum inelastic displacement calculation formula is 0 0.7 response modification factor and into delta s where delta s is the displacement corresponding to the shear given above okay the, uh, when we apl uh, apply this base shear to the building then definitely due to the horizontal base shear there will be deformation and the deformation will be delta s ubc simplified formula okay this is the approximate method of ubc uh, in the detail uh, detail method i will discuss later uh, first this is the ubc approximate method that is a base shear will be it can be calculated v is equal to 3 into ca over r into total seismic weight okay this is conservative formula having the following restrictions ordinary occupancy type light frame construction not exceeding three stories and any construction except bearing wall system but not exceeding two stories so these are the limitation of ubc simplified with def this is just uh, giving the brief idea about the ubc simplified formula but definitely we will go for the detail method when an earthquake hit to the structure or the building then the definitely the earthquake force or energy transfer from the base of the building to the top of the building it means and uh, forces will be transferred from the base first story second floor third and gone on the top story so for that distribution uh, or detail distribution here is a formula for uniform distribution of mass over height and first linear fundamental uh, mode of time period the distribution of base shear may be simplified as follows that is the formula v1 is the base shear uh, calculated depending upon the formula v is equal to csw and for base shear for, uh, for any story weight of that story height of the uh, that story and total cumulative sum of weight and height of all stories okay hi height above the base to the level okay height above the base to the level x okay definitely these uh, terminologies will be cleared in the example in order to account for higher mode effects in the above expression for long period buildings an additional force ft added at top of the structure in the free vibration analysis i have discussed that when we push the mass the mass moved in the horizontal then it will come back to its original position after some time it will stop the first cycle of that uh, building or mass or any structure that is called fundamental time period and for other uh, higher modes or other modes when after some time the, uh, the building will stop vibrating okay the next modes okay this formula is for the first mode first linear mode of fundamental period for other modes to count okay there is an additional ft force added at top of the structure here is ft the value of ft will be 0 0.07 multiplied by time period of the building multiplied by base shear when time period is greater than 0 0.7 second then you need to consider the value of uh, ft okay ft uh, then uh, formula will be ft plus mission fx the base shear will be remain same but the ft will be added in such cases v minus ft uh, multiplied by wx into hx divided by wi into hi the detailed discussion about this formula will be uh, cleared in the example okay here the additional force will be uh, uh, distributed in uh, uh, in the stories especially in the above story above top story